Hey guys, doing it. I think we're doing it off in here. Uh, all right, we come to part three of my reaction to the uh, three scary trigger trading stories, and we all know, uh, remember where that where I left off. I kind of, we sort of remember. Uh, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Enter the back of uh, enter the back of the to get your candy at your own risk. So. Uh, Let's see what happens. Under that, there was an evil-looking smiley face, along with an arrow pointing to the backyard. Chris said, let's just turn around and go back. But Good Jordan idea. and I wanted to go around back. It seemed interesting, as if they had something cool set up. <clears throat> Chris had... You're asking to get fucked up, man. No choice but to follow us around the house to the backyard, which was a small clearing for the miles of forest that surrounded. The back... You don't even know what's back there, for real. There could be candy and a prank. The yard was lit up orange as well, but not as brightly. There was a single torch that sat in the middle of the small yard. It provided enough orange light to see a note on the back door. We got closer to the back door and read the note. It was some kind of riddle. It said, if candy is what you desire, then you have to look closer to the fire. And yes, I still remember that stupid riddle to this day. So, of course, we assumed that by the fire meant by the torch. Chris was saying he did not like this, that it seemed too suspicious. I was kind of weirded out a bit, too, but Jordan seemed interested in it, and I didn't want to seem scared to him. Plus, it was the most interesting thing to happen all night in this boring town. There was nothing around the torch, though. It was literally just dug into the center of the backyard. Sure there was a smoke. It was literally just dug into the center of the backyard. There was a small wooden shed by the corner of the clearing, and in the other corner were a bunch of tools and wood scattered across the grass. Jordan tried leading us closer to the woods, but I was with Chris now. I was pushing for Jordan to just leave now, as it was too weird and creepy to be looking for candy in a stranger's backyard. He kept telling me, hang on, hang on, one more minute. While he was looking around, I started to examine the place. The house had an old, dirty look to it, surely a very low-income home. I started to examine the windows. One of them was cracked, the other had blinds closed, and then I looked up at the upstairs window. There was somebody looking down at us, specifically at me. When he or she noticed me, they moved away from the window and shut the blinds. I told Jordan we should go. I looked over to the window of the wooden shed. I could see someone poking their head out ever so slightly. I grabbed Jordan, yanking him over to follow me. But he, he was frozen still. He was looking up at the woods. I looked to see what he saw. There was a person coming out from the woods. Jordan was laughing, and I guess he thought it was supposed to be a part of this spooky setup. I watched with him until we saw the person come into light, wearing a genuinely horrific mask. And there was something in his hand. A machete. Jordan still thought it was a joke. Even Chris seemed to be laughing a bit. Hell, I started to think it was all just a nice little Halloween setup. Until the person wearing the mask charged at Jordan and swung the machete... Only he missed as Jordan backed up in time. We all sprinted back out front where we saw somebody blowing out the torches. He spotted us and started chasing us. We ran all the way down the dirt road, back down the paved road, and made it back to my house. Jordan was throwing up. I'm not sure if it was because of running so much or because of the fact that he almost lost his life. We told my parents right away. My dad called the police and asked them to come to the house. My dad then drove us to the house where it happened with the police following us. By the time we got there, everything was gone. And by everything, I mean the notes, the torches, and the candy bucket. The house had been vacant for months. Nobody was living there. It was the perfect place to set up a murder scene. We requested the police go inside to check. I can imagine. As I did spot somebody spying on us from upstairs. But, it turned out they were gone as well. We did the best we could to describe what happened and the people I saw. I believe one of the officers told my dad they would investigate further into this, and thanked us for the info. 
Maybe you don't realize how sick this world is. Full of insane, scary, messed up people. Until you actually come into encounter with them. Hmm. Alright. Well. My next reaction will be for part two of the horror, of the trigger train stories. So, uh, yeah. So my next reaction will be the uh, three creepy uh, real trigger train stor uh, horror stories on um, part two. So, uh, yeah, so I'm very much wanting to do those react. I'm really much wanting to do a reaction to uh, that today. Very much wanting to. And I'll kind of uh, make sure that I do do it today. Otherwise, it'll have to be tomorrow. <laughs>